Good afternoon, everyone, unless you're in Hawaii uh, or somewhere like that, that's morning, but it's afternoon here in Miami and it's afternoon coast to coast with everyone on the panel today. Uh, I'm Eric Haas, Director of Ho Residents Ho Living. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for another issue of episode of uh, Game Changers. We've had the top luxury real estate agents on over the past couple of months uh, and can continue to moving forward uh, every Thursday afternoon. Um, we have an incredible uh, group of panel experts today. Uh, we really think it's a great time now to constantly be talking with top agents so that the consumers out there and everyone out there understands what's going on uh, with real estate because it's such a crazy market right now. And we're very excited uh, to have some great guests on today, uh, all the way from California uh, to Texas, uh, to my backyard down the street here in Miami. So uh, let me go ahead and introduce uh, the, the panelists today. First of all, uh, Susan Stark, who's joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, wow. Susan, thank you so much. Compass in LA, thank you so much for joining us today. Nice to be uh, here. Susan, even though I know you look younger than this, I, I read your bio, so 31 years, right? Yes. Uh, in the business, 19 yes. years at Coa Banker. Correct. Uh, and then you started your own uh, launch which kind of came, became Compass a couple years ago, right? Three years yes, ago. it was Gibson International. Uh, we opened four offices. We were alive for 10 years before we were purchased by uh, First Pacific Union and then ultimately Compass in 2018. So and here you, I am. You were, from the, you, were, you were from the East Coast before your 31 years in real estate in LA. You were on the East Coast, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Tennessee, correct? Yes. Yes. I can tell by the accent. I remember you telling me that before. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, also, of course, you have a great knowledge of the West Side, which is where you focus on, uh, but I know you focus on all of LA. LA is global. We were just talking about that a little bit earlier. And I know you've been a, a, a huge performer for a very long time in LA, and we look forward to uh, hearing your insight as to what's going on. We, we talked about a little bit about it beforehand. So uh, looking right. forward to coming back over to you here in a minute after we okay. introduce everyone else. So mm -hmm. thanks again for joining us. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have Barbara Van Dyke, who's also Compass, uh, with us. Barbara's got an interesting story. She started in Hawaii, uh, was the Rookie of the Year in Hawaii as a real estate agent, and then picked up and moved to Austin, Texas. And uh, you've also lived, of course, in other areas. I know uh, you lived in Philly, I believe, right? You went to school at Temple. Right. Well, actually, I'm from Philadelphia originally, so that's correct. Yeah. Uh, well, I know we also have on... Uh, we also have on Andrea, who's from uh, Philadelphia, we'll talk to in a second, but, and I, I know you lived in Fl Florida as well, so you've been everywhere. I have been everywhere. <laughs> but now yeah. you're, you're a top agent in, in Austin, and uh, it's an interesting story that you told me before as to how you chose Austin, and we're gonna talk about that uh, okay. when we get into our, our questions, and we'd love to hear all about that. Uh, but to start, thank you so much for joining us. It looks thank like you. you're back in your office, or your home, you're at your home office. Home office still. Okay, looks like a real, looks like your home office really is an office, though, to me. It really is an office. <laughs> I mean, you've even got the fax machine, I think, from, from the old school days, right? Uh, no, it's a it's a all-in-one printer. There you go. All right. I know people still use a fax machine. I mean, my dad, he, he still said, he sends faxes. <laughs> faxes? Who sends faxes? <laughs> I don't know what faxes are. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll come back over to you in a minute. Thank you so much again for, for joining us. We look forward to it. Thank you. We also, we also have, and I just mentioned her name just now, uh, Andrea. Uh, Andrea, I want to pronounce your, 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 uh, the rest of your name properly. I, I you won't. <laughs> Desi Adre. Is um, that correct? It's, it's Daisy, like the flower. Daisy. Ed, yeah, Adre. But you spell it D E S Y. We do. Don't ask me why. Very or, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Yes. So thank you. Yeah. Great. Great to be here. Thank you. And of course, you started uh, Black Label Luxury uh, over a decade ago. I don't know exactly how many years ago but I know you've been a top 10 performer in Philadelphia uh, for over 10 years. And you also have a background at NYU. I read that you uh, won a national championship in basketball. That's amazing. And yeah, it was quite a few years ago, 1997 to be exact. So. That's amazing. That's, that was, that, yeah. that's amazing. So there was, there, there wasn't, I don't think the women had a professional league back then, right? Um, yeah. I mean, they've, they've had a, a basketball team for a while, but um, we, they switch divisions, Got which it. most people don't know about. But, and I know you also work with you work with a lot of celebrities and athletes with uh, with their properties, and uh, and we look forward to hearing all about uh, Philadelphia, what's going on there, and uh, we'll come, we'll definitely come back over to you. And I like your background. I got to get Thank a whole you. living background like that. I tried doing do. it, I can't figure out how to do it. 
trust me, it took me all day to figure it out. So <laughs> I just go with the O natural over here, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try and figure that, that, that the way to do that one out. Um, and then, of course, down the street here, we have Mary Pichardo. Uh, Mary, who's been, I know, uh, bilingual from Venezuela, now uh, based here in South Florida. But I know a big part of what you work on is, is the Latin community who, who would invest uh, in properties over here in South Florida. I know over 15 years of experience in business, and you, you focus not only investment properties, but also commercial properties. And your background is real. Uh, and it looks similar to I'm in Brickell, but your 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 office is up in uh, is near Aventura, right? Well, actually, hi Eric and hi everybody. Yes, it's real. My background is actually um, here. Well, I'm in Brickell at the moment. We have offices um, all around Miami. Uh, but yeah, it's something that is really nice, and especially because Miami has been always such a window for investments for Latin America from Europe, and we have the opportunity now to have. A lot of people coming from out of states. Yeah, so yeah. The right now in our city is amazing. Well, you know it. Yeah, everyone's everyone's been down here. I think international travel picking up again uh, with COVID getting better will be a good thing for you too. I'm sure uh, for that for, for the Latin uh, community being able to travel and, and look at the properties as opposed to doing it on Zoom or virtual tours and stuff. So and you know, with investors, they are um, used to having this long distance soon and everything figure it out. Well, we look forward to it. We look forward to hearing all about it and come, come, we'll come back, coming back over to you. Let's start in Los Angeles where they're three hours behind us here with Susan. Okay. Uh, Susan, thanks again so much for joining us. Um, so I guess the first question is, cause I know we've had others on from LA and it seems like week by week it changes and you've opened things up now. Uh, mm -hmm. So how's everything going? I, we talked a little bit about inventory How's everything going and how's inventory right now? And how's everything going with COVID? Well, we just hit our yellow zone, which means now offices will start opening up. So I, I know I'm hearing offices opening as early as next week, but I think the bulk of LA, in, especially in real estate offices, will be, probably be opening mid-June. Um, the, the market is beyond everyone's wildest imagination. Everything is selling. Uh, vacant lots. Uh, homes across the board, uh, number of homes uh, this qu this quarter over last year in LA in general were up about 26%. Uh, builders wow. are building, of course, the, their building costs have skyrocketed and sometimes almost doubled. So there's complaining there, but the building is continuing, the remodeling is continuing, lots of cash in the market. And, um, you know, there doesn't seem to be any indicators that that will change anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, what, what would you tell people? I know it seems like it's a great seller's market, but no one's selling. <laughs> so, what would you tell people that were maybe thinking about selling, but they're probably worried? What am I going to buy on the other side? What would you tell them? <laughs> or is that a hard question? Well, they can do what I did. I sold my property, and I'm in a rental. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? That's, a, that's actually a great, and then come come back around when, when you get better deals again, right? That Well, you're, yeah, I mean, I'm looking, market. I am looking. Uh, I, I, it's hard to compete out there, even for me, but, um, you know, I'm yeah. not, I can stay where I am and, you know, can either wait it out or jump in if I feel like it. So the pressure's off. Even the condo market is gone. It, it's no inventory, huh? Well, the condo market has not been as robust. I mean, I know no. in certain areas like Santa Monica, they, they actually were a bit slower. So, and and many of the high rises were a bit slower, uh, uh -huh. more difficult to sell. So there's deals to be had in the condo market still. Yeah, I, I, I figured. So that is that, is that, is that, that that's really where uh, the activity is right now in the market with everything else being uh, kind of uh, no, no inventory, right? Yeah, everything is, you're down to the last of what's left. So it's, it's, it's getting snapped up. Sure, sure. So, uh, so, so when, when a, there is an opportunity out there, uh, it's so competitive. Uh, I, I'm sure any, I guess I, I would say any advice out there for other agents, but I, want, I, don't, I don't think you're gonna wanna give that to anyone because you, you wanna get the property. So you don't wanna give any advice. You know, it's <laughs> the same thing. You've gotta be, you've gotta have your buyers prepped and ready. You know, you got, they already, they, they're going to have to know in advance, they're not going to get a appraisal contingency. They're, it, you know, they're, they may not get a loan contingency and they're going to get a very short window for, you know, physical and things like that. 
because people are just giving up all of those out here. And how quickly are properties selling when they actually do go on the market? And what's the, how far over asking price are you, got, are you seeing them go at? Well, uh, let's see. Um, they're going, you know, within the first, they're selling within the first couple of weeks, generally okay. speaking. I think the average number of days is, I think we have about, in most of our areas, including the two that I was focusing on today, we've got about a month and a half to two months supply of inventory. And they go, you know, you'll get, you'll be in multiple offers the first week. Wow. And what was your other question? I guess the key is how to price it. And the key, the key element is having an agent that understands how to price it properly. Cause you, you can make a big mistake right now and lose a lot of money by not pricing it right. You can, I mean, but, but don't get me wrong. There are still properties that are overpriced that there's, yeah. you know, there's all, it, there's so much that our, our territory is so large that there are some overpriced properties that that will sit so yeah. but yeah i mean it's hard to underprice your property let's put it that way so are you expanding your geography a little bit i know you do you know you do studio city in a lot of areas in la are you you mentioned malibu are you expanding a little bit since there is less inventory to those areas i have i mean it was a very interesting year last year i had one of my best years but i you know i had previously been more focused in Brentwood and Be yeah. from Beverly Hills to Santa Monica. And yeah. I started expanding to Sherman Oaks, Studio City, yeah. Encino and outer lying areas. And, you know, it's just, but it's true with, with the technology that we have and especially at Compass, it's much easier to go be global. It just is. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What technology have you, have you utilized um, differently and that you hadn't used before with regard to during COVID? Oh, well, I mean, that's Zoom. That, that, Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've all OD on Zoom. We're OD. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I coach with uh, a, a real estate coach, and he, he's, he's encourages us all to not even go to the houses just to yeah. get your listing appointments on Zoom. And I'm still old school, though. I like, I like a handshake and face to face. Yeah. I like to be yeah. in the house. So. I think Zoom's been great though for like uh, like with me doing these, I, I would have never met you guys in person until if I'm in LA or you're over here. So, uh, you know, I think that it does, I, there is something about that vi video connection that's more personal than phone, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, it's not like the old, and I've heard a lot of agents say they, they, they miss the drive in the car because you still can't drive in the car with your clients, right? From house yeah, to house. I, I miss it. Yeah, I don't drive. You get to know your client better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of agents are complaining about, are you, you're still not allowed to drive in your car with the clients, right? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, I guess it's a personal choice. I mean, I haven't heard a, a, a you know, a specific ordinance or a law that says. Yeah. That. Okay. Well, uh, we'll, 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 we'll come back over to you for a little bit more. Let's go up to our other compass uh, agent on right now down to Texas, Austin, Texas, where is it getting a little hot Barbara, uh, now down there? I, I know it's, it's gotta be hot in the summer, but are you getting up there now? We are, we're regularly in the 80s. Sometimes we hit 90, but we haven't gone out too much over that yet. So won't be long. Texas, I'll tell you, it's a boom in Austin's always been one of the top rising areas for job opportunities and real estate investments for many years. And it continues to be that. Um, but Texas as a whole seems like it's booming to me. Uh, it really is. It really is. I think yeah. it's probably one of the number, it's probably the number one market. Um, and within Texas, Austin and Dallas are the two markets, I think, that are probably the hottest. They're experiencing the most growth. I was telling Susan earlier that we actually have about 200 people moving to the Austin market a day. Wow. So that's, that's a lot job of opportunities people. too, right? Right. And that's really what I think is driving so much of the population increase, okay? Because we've had so many companies that have relocated here. And of course, everybody's heard about, oh yeah, Tesla has moved, has moved here. Oracle moved their headquarters here. Apple's opening their new campus here. We've got multiple Amazon distribution centers and, and things here. But beyond that, just even just since the first of this year, we've had at least a dozen other companies. They're not necessarily names you would know, or the average person would know they're not the big headline names. Mm -hmm. But when you have that many companies relocating to Texas or to Austin, yep. um, and it's driving tens of thousands of jobs, people are going to continue to come here. Yep. And it's one of the lower cost uh, states from a 
tax perspective because we don't have an income tax. So I think a lot of, like a lot of other states with no income tax, we're going to continue to benefit from from that. Now it's putting a quite the strain on the housing market here, but um, you know, yeah, tons of influx here. How, how is now? I know we just talked a little bit about inventory in LA. How's the inventory in Austin uh, right now? Oh, I wish I had two months of inventory. I wish I did. I have probably about two weeks, um, two okay. weeks, uh, seriously, less than a month wow. of inventory. It's very, very tight. Most of our homes are under contract within the thir first three to five days, um, all with multiple offers. Um, you know, I started looking at kind of what had been happening last year over this year, you know, March numbers. Um, I think I pulled up stats, March data across the Metro area, um, prices increased 28, almost 29% from March, from the previous March. Okay. Wow. We, re we really never experienced a dip. I mean, one of the questions that y'all sent in advance was, you know, had pr our prices continuing to decline? Well, they never did. Yeah. Um, I would say most every agent I know had their best year ever last year. We didn't really slow down. Unlike a lot of other areas of the country, real estate continued to be, um, one of those critical businesses that essential businesses yeah. that didn't have to shut down. Yeah. Um, so in reality, throughout the entire year of last year, and even into this, and of course into this year, I've never stopped showing homes. I never stopped listing homes um, in person. So that that wasn't really an issue for us here in Texas because it was deemed an essential business. Um, our, our prices have gone through the roof. And just since the first of the year, I think I've seen prices go up. Well, personal experience, I've seen prices increasing probably 20 to 40% since the first of the year. And all, almost every home selling in multiple offers. So it's been very tough for the buyers. Yeah, yeah, no, I can imagine, I can imagine. Um, and are you, do, are you kind of opening up your area out, a little outside? I know, I know you do some other areas outside of Austin. You know, I some do. of those ranch areas. I do. Uh, so, yeah. so one of the things that I think I've had to do just out of yeah. necessity is uh, my business has always been a little bit broader than just the city of Austin because yeah. I do self, uh, in addition to residential, I do sell farm and ranch. I also uh -huh. do a little bit of, I touch on commercial a little bit. Um, I have a great winery for sale. If anybody knows a winery buyer, I'm just saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, the farm and ranch. So I'm seeing land prices expand throughout the area, almost doubling in some cases. So wow. stuff even an hour outside of Austin wow. is still very hot and very much in demand. Wow. Yeah, and, and you yeah. have to, you have to. If you have lower price buyers, there's nothing in Austin right now that we can put them in. And when I say lower price, if you're talking about maybe a first time buyer um, or even some of my high net worth clients that are looking for investment properties and they wanna spend somewhere around 300,000, that's a really tough, price point to be in. And mostly I'm having to push them further and further out into the suburban areas around surrounding Austin. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, those ranches I'm sure are, are very popular, especially with COVID uh, looking to get more space. Absolutely. So a lot of my high net worth, worth clients and, and also high net worth folks coming in from other areas um, are not looking for homes like right in the city. They're looking for space. So acreage is a big deal. And I've been selling properties that are 10, 12, 15, 20 acres um, and, and they sell rapidly. I had even Johnson City, which a good hour outside of Austin, like I said, wow. um, 12 acre property, um, put it on the market at 1.2 and it sold within a week. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And that wouldn't norm that I think prior to last year, that would not have happened. Johnson yeah. City would not have been an area that would have sold as quickly as that, yeah. um, you know, in 2019 or even the beginning of 2020 before the pandemic hit. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, tell us a, a little bit more about the story. Uh, we're going to backtrack to Hawaii uh -oh. uh, where you were, uh, you took off in real estate your first year and then you decided to change to go to Austin. Um, it did. Yeah, and, you, and it's an interesting story. You, you, you just basically researched, right? You tell us the story, but you researched and you, and you found out that to be a great market. You didn't really have many connections there. I didn't. I moved here back in 2013. Um, I, you know, personal story, went through a divorce, um, left him out in Hawaii, decided I wasn't going to stay there. And I knew that I wanted to come to a market that was, I was actually looking for a smaller town, but wanted one that would be a primary home market versus a vacation home market like Hawaii is. Mm -hmm. um, and in researching it really found that Austin was growing, it was up and coming, there was a lot of opportunity. 
And I thought that it would be a great market. So I moved here, but unfortunately I didn't know anyone when I moved here. So I just kind of <laughs> rented an apartment site unseen <laughs> and I've been growing the business ever since. So. And, you, and, and now you, I'm sure now you have a lot of friends and a big Rolodex. I do. <laughs> yes, I do. But yeah, it's not easy moving to a new town. I, I moved to Miami from DC in the first year is, uh, and I'm social, but it's, it's, it's hard for anyone. You know? It is, it is, but you know, you land on your feet and you just keep moving. I think, yeah. uh, and, and I think getting... when I started, I took the approach that, you know, um, eating was a good thing. And so I would take whatever I could get. So and yeah. I started working across all, that's really why I started working across all price points. Yeah. Because I had to continue to pay the rent and put food on the table, you know? Yeah, well, it seems like it's worked out for you. It's worked out pretty well. <laughs> Although Hawaii sounds kind of fun too. I mean, you know, I, I oh, it's a great place. It's a great yes. place. We actually just opened um, offices on on the four major islands there. So there's oh, okay. uh, some great folks over in Hawaii now with Compass. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yep. We'll come. We'll come back over to you. Let's go over to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love uh, for Andrea mm -hmm. Daisy. Uh, Andrea, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start with this, uh, you know the same question for you. How is everything? right now with Philadelphia, with COVID uh, and inventory uh, with regards to the luxury market and how do you think it's gonna go moving forward? So the luxury market is booming. Um, we have a, a very strong correlation between what goes on in the city of Philadelphia and then the outlying suburbs, which are you know just literally right outside the city. Um, inventory is exceptionally low. Things are selling anything pretty much under to two and a half million is moving very, very well. It's really, it's interesting because now it's not so much about location. I mean, we have homes that had been on the market, you know, a year or two ago, even as much as, you know, six months ago that, that didn't sell. And then they got relisted this year. Some actually went up in price with the new listing price and, and they sold. It's just wow. what's happened even in the last four months has been, um, a little mind blowing. It's so hard to price homes because you know yeah. the comps are all over the place. Yeah. We're constantly getting calls from appraisers asking us to help them because they don't know what's going on. Um, the city's coming back. Our our city in particular really struggled um, just with everything that went on in May. We got hit pretty hard with a lot of the the protesting and some of the more affluent areas like Rittenhouse Square, uh, where you know it'd be like living on Park Avenue in New York. Um, people were really reluctant with all the restaurants and the stores and the amenities closing. Nobody really wanted to be in a condo building. Um, we represent the Ritz-Carlton in Philadelphia here and they still, we can't do open houses. The resident lounge is still closed. Um, you know, they're limiting the amount of people coming in. So that's made it a little bit harder. Um, outdoor space has been a huge, huge driving factor, but we're seeing people that are moving from the city to the suburbs that aren't even married yet and they don't even have kids. They just want more space and mm -hmm. they don't even care if they're on a busy road. So mm -hmm. it's been interesting to see like what's been selling in a non-COVID world. A lot of these homes that are selling, I think, you know, wouldn't be flying off the shelves. Um, so our, like our luxury barometer, the, the price has definitely gone up, I would say a good 10 to 15%. Um, and our market has been exceptionally flat since the crash of 2008. So we had like a very, very slow, um, almost like a plateau in pricing. So, you know, we're still quite affordable in comparison to, you know, the New York market, the DC market, the other uh, mid-Atlantic towns. And, you know, now we're finally kind of going back to the, the pre-2008 prices. So it's still affordable. I mean, the prices are up, but we never had, you know, another rebound after 2008. We're seeing that now. How's the condo market compared to the single family home market? It's getting better. We're starting to see some activity now. I think as people are vaccinated, they have comfort levels being in, you know, the buildings, the people, our market is, you know, we do a lot of stuff on the main line, which is um, just the Western suburban area right outside of the city. And a lot of those people would downsize into the city. And that has been, you know, just put on hold the last year. Now, you know, starting to see them go back in as people have more stronger comfort level with vaccinations and kind of living in a, you know, a, a building with 200 plus people. But our inventory is, it, it's just, it's low. Um, we wish we had 
more to sell, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, the suburban areas that, that, that uh, outside of Philadelphia, um, and I, you know, I'm from DC and, and DC's really mainly also the suburbs, Northern Virginia, Maryland. Uh, I know Philadelphia, you guys have a pretty big suburbs as you get outside of Philadelphia as well. Um, what, what, what suburbs are really the hot areas outside of Philly that have been, uh, um, so you know, that are up and coming? Ones that are established, Lower Marion Township um, is right outside of Philadelphia, yep. Radnor Township. So within those pockets, you have towns like Gladwin and Villanova and Haverford and Bryn Mawr. Um, and then you have Wayne. Um, we're seeing it kind of overflow to, you know, some of the, the further, the Western suburbs, uh, but the public schools are amazing here and they have exceptionally well, um, very high ranked, private schools also, and we have public transportation. So that's been helpful, but we we saw a huge influx of New Yorkers coming in to Philadelphia during COVID. And that really drove a big portion of, of our market. Um, the resurgence, people coming in, even just renting that needed, you know, coming from a studio or a one bedroom apartment that here they could get a two or three bedroom apartment for less than what they were paying for a one. Um, we had a ton of rental inquiries for our suburban properties, but you know the sellers didn't really. A lot of them didn't end up. They wanted to sell, which was, which was smart. But I don't think it's a trend that's going to be going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So even if interest rates go up, there's still a lot of people that have been on the sidelines, and you know they're kind of chomping at the bit to to make a move. How's the international business for Philadelphia? Obviously, it's been a challenge for everyone the last year or so. But it, uh, how, how was it before COVID, and do you see that coming back? I mean, it was, it wasn't a huge portion of our market. We, you know, we're really fueled by the meds and the eds. So the medical yeah. institutions and the educational Absolutely. institutions, we have, you know, a ton of hospitals here, yeah. University of Pennsylvania and Comcast, um, a lot of colleges, Bryn Mawr College, Haverford College, yeah. Temple, Drexel. So, you know, we've been seeing the people, we've been seeing people coming in, but they're working, um, they're doctors, or they're coming in, um, you know, new, new deans of, of some of these educational institutions or their financial companies that are leaving New York and are setting up offices here for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so not as many international. I mean, that we'd get like the occasional CEO that's coming in from for Dow that's, you know, but that's not really hasn't been a huge portion of our business. Um, yeah. You know, that's not the driving factor. It's been the New Yorkers, quite yeah. honestly. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people that, that, that from Philadelphia have been there for a long time. They don't leave. I know that because I'm a sports fan <laughs> and your sports fans are just nuts. I mean, I, those they Eagles are. fans, I'm a you know, DC fan. Those Eagles fans, I think they jumped the mascot in the, in the parking lot for the rest. They do. So I'm not, from, I'm not from Philadelphia originally. I'm from Detroit, so I can't really. That's true. You're New York, right? I, yeah. yeah then New York. New York I, I don't really, I still don't understand them, but you know, I, they're, they're a little, they're overly serious when it comes to sports. Yeah, it's wild, it's wild. <laughs> All right, we'll come back over to you. Let's go over to Mary, who's, uh, who's uh, down the street over here, or close to me, not down the street, but I guess down route, down 95, or, route, uh, or uh, A1A. But uh, Mary, thanks again for joining us. I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, uh, but tell us what's going on right now with, with COVID, obviously we've had a ton of people on the East Coast from every every area of the East Coast coming down here and living here this this, this winter. Um, how's everything going uh, with you right now with COVID and, and the international as well with you specializing a lot of Latin America business too? Well, actually here in Miami, we're experiencing um, an opening from the COVID regulations, as you know. So basically Miami has been always been this window for investment, international investors. And now we're seeing all the people coming from New York, from California, um, looking to relocate, um, not only because we have, of course, the awesome weather and the location, and especially uh, with many international companies that need the location, that need the logistics, that need to invest. And many companies um, that are moving, especially tech companies. And what we have here in Miami happening now is the support of the mayor, uh, Francis Suarez, that is doing a great um, marketing strategy um, all over the U.S., especially with tech and crypto and different types of payments and investments that you can do here in Miami. 
And the good thing about it is that we have so many different areas between the, the Miami-Dade County. Uh, we are, of course, here in Brickell. Um, you are, I think, um, closer to downtown. But we have condos, we have the sea views, we have everything. We also have single family. We have a lot of opportunity for multi-family. Uh, we have in, uh, we can do uh, rentals. We can do short-term rentals for vacation. So it's a very mixed market that it, it has been picking up. Um, it has been very stable and it has been um, growing even more at this point, especially with the opening of COVID regulations. How's the inventory going for you, for you as far as uh, inventory? Is it uh, still some similar challenges to everyone else? Oh, yes. I think that I can relate with everybody. Sometimes we think that we are now in, in one of the hottest markets, but when you see other ones, we, we can see all over the U.S. that inventory is very low. And even though um, the good thing about here is that we have different uh, condos building, we have actually so many good projects, even in luxury and also in investment properties that are growing, but it's still um, the inventory is very low. Mm -hmm. How's, how's the condo market? Uh, I know that's bounced back a little bit. That was hurting last year. And it seems like that's bounced back. Is there still deals to be had in condos in South Florida? Well, yeah, now it's picking up. Last year, it was very tough because most yeah. of the people didn't want to live in condos, especially yeah. the condos, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm in, we yeah. have more than a thousand apartments uh, per building. So imagine that we have like most of the amenities closed as well. So when you think about it, you were, well, I'm so afraid of having all these people around and I don't have the amenities anymore. Mm -hmm. People were trying to move, of course, to rent to single family or going to West Palm or like the outside areas. But now it's picking up because many people realize that first of all, you have the convenience. And second of all, you have to think about also the fixed costs that you're going to have when you get a single family. Then you have to invest a lot more um, with the gardening, with the roofing, with all the repairs, and you don't have the convenience that you have in the condo market. And now with the vaccine and all the regulation lifting, lifting up, then condos are being very attractive. And it's impressive how much the rents are going up every single day. Yeah. Uh, what, would you, what would you say to those people? I know you focus with investors. Uh, what would you say to people out there uh, that are possibly thinking about investing right now in a property in Miami-Dade County? Uh, what would you tell them? Is it a good time to invest right now? And what would the reasons why be for an investment property? Yes, I think that even though I work mostly with investors, um, I believe that real estate is the most important investment that you can do, even if you're going to buy your house, um, your primary home, your primary residence. And I believe, and I firmly believe that you have to create a strategy mm -hmm. because there is opportunity everywhere. And then you have to try to focus. If everybody's going to single family and everybody's trying to, think about this, then you have to look from some other options and have a vision and have an open mind when you're looking for one, especially in this market. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then uh, in terms of, I know we talked a little bit with the other guys, um, how far do you go up uh, geographically with inventory? If the inventory is tight, are you opening up your geography going into Broward and Palm Beach a little bit too? Oh yes, I, I go to Orlando actually. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, they have the new train that's getting, the high-speed train that's going to be built. Yeah, the good thing is that actually I graduated in Orlando. Um, wow. I did my major there in Rollins College, so wow. in economics, so I yeah. know the whole Florida market. And I think um, that you have to be very open, and especially we're going to have the train, which is mm. going to be connecting. At this point, of course, it closed um, during COVID, but it was wow. in Miami to West Palm, and now it's opening a station to Orlando. So imagine wow. the convenience that you're going to have, that you're going to be able to have your uh, vacation home, or especially if you need to move around uh, between that and take your family and take your investors, you know, be open to all this. You're going to have a very convenient trend going from downtown to West Palm and then to Orlando. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. something that is going to improve in the area. And especially um, in downtown also, our center is opening. You have like different projects, as I, as I mentioned before. You have um, luxury, then you have short term, you have investment properties and all the zone and the area is growing amazing. And of course we're getting culture, restaurants, everything from New York and other states. 
Awesome, awesome. Have, have you have you utilized uh, uh, any new technology that you, that you didn't use before COVID uh, to connect with people? I know we talked about Zoom. Are you using Matterport or other technologies that maybe you hadn't used before? Oh yes, of course. Well, Zoom it has been like an amazing yeah. tool yeah. for using, and of course our phones and the connections and everything. I think yeah. now every tool that can get connected uh, yeah. with somebody between uh, between cities and, and of course between countries. And I think that actually this helped a lot as the e-commerce has been because mm -hmm. people feel more comfortable before. Um, yeah. I'm actually old school as well. I like to meet in person and I like to show properties, uh, walk yeah. around and all that. But then people is more open to, to use the, the technology and to use these tools. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Let's go back over to uh, Susan in Los Angeles. Uh, Susan, we'd love to hear, I know you mentioned last year was one of your best years ever. Uh, what, tell me, what, one, is there one success story that stands out of maybe a big challenge when things first started in March, April, and we thought the world was coming to an end, and then how it became a successful client and a successful Susan uh, as well? Is there any story that, you, that sticks out or anything you want to share with us from the past year with COVID? Well, we all went under, we, uh, underground back, yeah. I think it was March 15th. <laughs> so yeah. the, the first month, I, you know, my boyfriend and I just went and hid in Palm Springs. And then, <laughs> it, it, you know, come April 15th, I was bored out of my mind. So I just said, this is it for me. I'm, I don't know what the rest of the world is going to do, but I'm going back to work. This is an essential business. So, I mean, I think... I, I can't pinpoint a story, but what I did do was I did get on coaching calls and I did, I, I, I just made an extraordinary effort to reconnect with everybody, anybody uh -huh. and everybody, calling agents, uh, calling friends, calling clients, getting on the Zoom meetings, get doing the inspirational things and just not accepting that the world was coming to an end. Yeah. And, you know, and we, and then, you know, when I came back, I mean, we got out there and it was hot. We had our gloves, our plastic gloves on and our masks and we yeah. just walked down the houses <laughs> and it was not glamorous at yeah. all. So I guess, you know, the, the story is, is, you know, we just trudged through, we just trudged through. Yeah. And we got yeah. it done. And, and then it was just, it was really opening, you're opening our minds to new ideas and, uh -huh and understanding that the world is never going to be the same again and we've got to flow with it and yeah. you know and you mentioned Matterport and it's like changing the online presence you know you know I'm an old dog in the re in the real estate business so I had to learn a lot of new tricks <laughs> so and just being open to it yeah and social and, media you know, we, things like that too right but, uh, yeah and we 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 learned a lot we're very proud of what we did last year and our, our team and you know i, I it was it was a, a pivotal year absolutely yeah so. yeah that that, that 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 that's awesome that's awesome uh what would you say to uh well actually this is a question um that i was thinking about as we're talking with you guys um it seems to me like right now there probably are some agents that are not veteran agents that are probably over promising clients things. And mm -hmm. when you're up against them in a property, how do you, I mean, like, does that cause problems when there's unqualified agents that are promising certain, certain things right now in a challenging time that are untrue? Uh, is it hard? Does that make it harder for seasoned it, veterans like you guys? It does. It, it really does. And, uh, you know, the seasoned veterans know who each other are, who, who, who we are, you know, we all are. And, you know, I've just always been an agent that, you know, would rather under promise and over deliver. Yeah. So it's a marathon, but, not a sprint. I was reading that we've got more agents in our market than in the history of real estate. I don't know what the numbers are, but, but it, it, there's a huge amount of agents in the LA area. I mean, well, I mean know, yeah, but, but mo I, I think out of, I don't know, out of every hundred agents, I think there's only like one that's actually really, uh, serious and really all in like you guys are, right? I, well, you guys are one in a million, but you know what I'm saying? Most agents are not even full-time, right? I would, I would say that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what constitutes full-time, whether it's the hours you put in or what you produce, but 
But what I'm what, what I'm what I think I'm seeing is a lot of the, uh, the top agents like you guys, the upper one percent agents, are getting a lot of business because people are really going with people they trust right now. But they because they know that it's such a, a challenging time, they don't want to mess around with their friend down the street who's a realtor. They want to go with the best of the best. So I I think that people who who are smart and they want to get the maximum for their home, uh, it's really important right now to go with the top agent that that's been doing it a long time. It's true. It's true. You want to be the trusted advisor to your client. And um, I've always tried to be that. And it's, it's, I've reaped the benefits of it for sure. So in terms of international business, I know you guys are huge for international business as we build that back up. Which markets have been the biggest for you uh, outside of the U.S. internationally? Uh, we have had, I mean, in the past, we had a lot of Chinese and European uh, mm-hmm. buyers coming in. During COVID, it seems like those got replaced by New Yorkers coming in, yeah. by um, uh, Northern California, because we're fueled by tech and entertainment. So entertainment took, that kind of went went undercover for a while. It's just now rebound. Silicon Valley, yeah. Sil- yeah Silicon, Silicon Valley, Valley really- is, is coming here. Google yeah. has literally taken over an entire mall on the west side so they're bringing wow. thousands and thousands of employees down here and they they've loosened their rules that their employees they don't have to go to their offices any longer so yeah, yeah that, they, a lot of those companies are, are permanently saying they can work from everywhere other places correct so we're and, and they were moving to aspen and, and and tahoe but they're out of inventory so correct. they can't go correct. there <laughs> correct and see our prices are very reasonable compared to theirs. They have they have very much less inventory than we have. So yeah. um, I, you know, I've sold to even professional athletes from Northern California buying second homes, but you know, a lot of East Coasters, uh, you know, New York in particular. So yeah, yeah, New York. I think New York. A lot of New Yorkers were going to LA, and obviously down here they're going. New York was kind of going everywhere for a while, but I think New York bouncing back a little bit now. My partner in New York said recently that she said that uh, it was her best month ever last month. So, and she's a heavy hitter in, in, in New York City. So mm-hmm. that's a good sign. She said that yes. people are still getting deals, but they're starting to run out of inventory, inventory now. So New York always bounces back. Always. But also interesting, LA, people were moving from LA over here to uh, South Florida. There was a lot of that too. We are seeing a lot of people move to Texas, moving out of the state. That's for sure. I saw, uh, what, what's the reason for that you think? I think Tax. dissatisfaction, taxes, uh, for sure. Uh, dissatisfaction of, of the way our state has been handled during COVID and, and whatnot. Um, yeah. and, and going to more, you know, businesses are moving to more business friendly environments uh, like Texas and Florida. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, and then the schools are reopening in the fall, right? So people are coming, the kids are coming back. Many of them schools. are open um, or partially open. Either they're doing, uh, you know, morning classes or every other day classes. The private schools have been open for some time. Because that's a huge. I mean, the California school system's amazing, and that brings a lot of uh, people to your, you know, to California. How has that affected real estate not having the schools open? Has that affected it all, or not really? How has it affected? You know, I well, I think it's affected real estate in the sense that parents who have their children at home, you know, have yeah. many new challenges. And so they need new space. They need, you know, your home is now your, your yeah. office, your playground, your restaurant, yeah. everything. So there it's causing, you know, moving around. Yeah. For sure. I understand that. Yeah. yeah no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Let's go back over to, uh, to Barbara over in, uh, in Texas, um, in Austin, Texas. Although I guess you're in downtown. Oh, well, do you, you live in downtown Austin or do you live outside of Austin? No, I live in uh, South Austin, so okay. yeah, yeah. All right, close to um, down. So uh, I, I'm going to ask you uh, for your success story as well. Is there any great success story from when COVID started, uh, where we were down in the dumps and you t- turned something that was negative into a real positive with a client of yours or an overall situation? I think just in terms of my business, I just made a you know kind of a declaration, put my you know, uh, put a stake in the ground and just said that my business isn't going to go out of business just because things were shutting down. And I literally did have my best year 
ever, closed more deals than I'd ever closed, and sold a lot of uh, really great properties, including one um, I'd taken a listing, it had been on the market with another agent previously. It was a uh, showcase home, so um, Southern Living Showcase Home, and I just took it on and rebranded that, and we got it closed over asking, um, and it appraised in April of 2020, you know, as things were even shutting down, but to get that one done and, and enable that family to move on um, was a huge, was a huge win. But overall, it was just about the, I think, kind of the conviction of I'm not going out of business. So let, let's just do whatever we need to do to, to keep the business going. So. Well, I, I, mean, I know you have the, the Johnson City property that was sold. That yeah, that's really Is that the same one you're talking about? No, that's a different one. That's a different one. So tell us I about that one. I'm look. I, I, I actually, uh, Anders, our editor, just put it up. Uh, it looks um, like a gorgeous ranch ranch property. It was, and then the uh, the one I'm referring to is the one on Rusty Ridge. If you're looking on, you know, the the ones I've sold. So that was a gorgeous property. It was completely um, taken. Oh wow, down that's gorgeous. The, I'm looking right now. Completely yeah. down to the studs and remodeled by Meredith Ellis, um, who's an, a, a fabulous interior designer, and it was a it was a Southern Living Showcase home, and um, it just cool. it really needed a um, kind of a fresh approach and a rebrand. But you know you know that I've got almost twenty five years in the marketing and PR world before getting into real estate. So when it comes to marketing properties, especially high end properties, I really know how to do that. That's sort of a specialty, um, and so just kind of a refresh and a rebrand of that property and enabled it to, to get it moved um, even during and despite COVID. So I guess that was a great success story. And yeah, really no, absolutely. I, I love the bathroom, the bathtub oh. in there. It looked amazing. I was just looking at the bathroom. Oh my it's, God. A, it's, a, it's a dreamy bathroom, like that master bath. Um, I think the other big thing for me is at January of 2020, I hired a young uh, licensed assistant. It was the first time I'd ever hired a full-time licensed assistant and she's a young single mom. And so part of that, me putting the stake in the ground and saying, I'm not going out of business was, I was not about to let a single mom, you know, lay have to lay off a single mom during COVID. Um, to me, that was really important that I was gonna make sure that she had a job that she and, you know, her kids felt secure and we were just gonna do whatever it took to to keep the business going, so. Yeah, that, 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 that's great that you were able to, and now you're thriving this year. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Although I'd love to get some more listings, It's but like everyone else, it's like we're, you know, sellers are saying, yeah, we'd love to sell, but where are we gonna go? So yeah. um, that's, that's a really big deal uh, right now is just trying to work to get those listings. And that's a great point about marketing. I feel like uh, all, the, all the best real estate agents, I'm a, as a consumer, all the best real estate agents are, they, they, they are very in tune with marketing. Uh, of course, I'm in marketing myself. Like a whole residence is the best place to be, clearly, as you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You're, I'll call you a marketing genius for that. Oh, but, okay. uh, <laughs> that I think that, 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 that marketing does separate you. Obviously, I feel like as a realtor, you wear a lot of hats and marketing is certainly a big one for you guys. Um, yes, you know. that marriage counseling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I asked you about your Hawaiian story. I didn't need. I didn't. I didn't need you to tell, say that you got divorced. You said that. I right. No, I, I get it. I didn't bring up the divorce. <laughs> well, no, I was talking about for the clients, the marriage counseling <laughs> for the clients. <laughs> when husbands and wives aren't on the same page, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. I well, I read the book. Women are from Mars. Men are from Venus. I understand that. I don't yeah. know if you were, you know that book, but. Men and women just think differently sometimes, you know? That all, we all understand each other. But I'm on with four women right now, so I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> I don't want to get myself in trouble here. <laughs> Not good, Eric. <laughs> so let, let's, go, let's go back over to, uh, to, to Andrea uh, Daisy over in, uh, in Philly. Uh, Andrea, uh, I'd love to hear a great success story that you have um, over the past year with COVID starting in March, or about a year ago. Uh, any specific story or an overall story of a uh, challenge that turned into a great success uh, from the past year for you that you want to share with everyone? Yeah, so recently um, we, we sold on a property that um, was with doctors that were relocating in um, from out of town. And I think it kind of just goes back to what we were discussing earlier, just you know relationships with other agents. Um, so it, we were one of 13 offers and 
we actually ended up getting the house because the listing agent didn't know the other 12 agents who had submitted offers. And, you know, we weren't the best offer. We had an escalation clause and we actually were $100,000 less than the highest priced offer. But we got it because the listing agent said, like, I don't know these other 12 agents. I've never heard of them. I don't know, you know, how they operate. I don't know if they'll ever get to closing. And I know that, you know, if we do this deal together, we're going to get to the closing table. And, you know, we have so many new agents here too. Just everybody's an agent again. And I remember when I moved to Philly in 2003, it was kind of, you know, there was a lot of new agents coming in, you know, between 04 and up until the, the 2008 bubble. And I actually think it's, there's much more there. Everyone's an agent now. Everyone's an investor. All of the investment properties are going to, you know, realtors that want to dabble in, in, in the market. So it's interesting. It'll see how it'd be interesting to see how it pans out. Um, there's been people that are, you know, they're getting their license because their parents are selling their house. And, you know, I think that's great. But at the end of the day, like if you're not in this 24 seven, you're really, like anything, you're not going to succeed. And this isn't really a part-time business. So um, I think once this kind of craze, when it does end, whether it's six months, a year or two from now, um, and you kind of have to go back and and get back to the basics and, and market and networking. And, you know, most of our people aren't on Instagram or Facebook. And I'm always blown away by a lot of the new agents who have all of these followers. But, you know, it's like, what does that mean? And you're only as good as, you know, as your, as your network. So, um, you know, we've been fortunate. We do a lot of marketing is a huge thing for us. I just finished up a, an event we had with Ferrari at one of our, nine million now it's nine million dollar listings um so it's just you know trying to think outside of the box has been a very big thing for us we get a lot of listings that other agents have have failed to sell and reposition them um and you know there's there's always more properties that haven't that won't sell because of, of price or just how they're positioned so um that's been fun. It's a lot of work as you all know but marketing is kind of if, if you don't have a good marketing plan um it's just, you know, it's, it's a matter of time until something else happens, but you can't, I don't think we can just rely on, on how crazy the, the, the frenzy is right now. Yeah, no, uh, all, all, uh, all great points. Um, on that, on the point that you said about $100,000, uh, so someone walked away from $100,000 more, that's a testament obviously to you as an agent. And I think that kind of tells a story of going with an agent like yourself or all, all four of you guys but right now, you don't want to mess around with an agent that doesn't know what they're doing. You were able to get a property for your client that was hundred thousand dollars less uh, because of uh, because of your reputation, and uh, that's that, that's pretty incredible. Uh, as a homeowner, uh, it's interesting that the, that they walked away from that, uh, just knowing that they would get the jo the job done with you, and probably something could have happened with the other one and fallen through, and nothing, and then that wouldn't have happened. So uh, that's an awesome story. Um, yeah, we're lucky. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and then with regards to um, your, I know you work with celebrities, athletes, uh, you have very, very high level people. Are you allowed to talk about some of the celebrities or athletes you've worked with or are you uh, uh, not allowed to talk about it? Um, yes, yeah, so recently okay. Adam Sandler was in town for four months. So we put him, we do a lot of off market listings just because uh -huh. some of these homes here, there's a lot of money in Philly, but it's still kind of provincial. So some of these homes that these people have gone crazy with customizing, they will literally sit on the market for years. Uh -huh. So those properties, we, we really just, we keep off market and we just really kind of vet them out to people that we know are in the market or other agents. And um, one of our properties, which is, you know, um, pretty significant. We had put Jay-Z and Beyonce in it when they were in town a couple years ago. Um, we placed Adam Sandler in there um, as a rental and kind of used the, once he moved out, we couldn't say anything when he was staying in the house while he was filming the movie. But once he moved out, we were then able to kind of, you know, use that for our marketing just to kind of create a little uniqueness to it. He was um, actually, he had a, a Zoom when he was the Jimmy Kimmel show and was kind of talking about the house. So that was a nice plug. I don't think that's going to equate until 
the, the dollars that the seller wants because it just <laughs> is overbuilt for our market. But um, kind of a Jimmy Kimmel show, probably, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's more of something like bragging rights for the, for the sellers. But um, yeah. you know, the athletes are they only spend a certain amount of money here, unless they're from Philly. You know, there's really no reason for them to go crazy like they would in New York or LA or Miami. Yeah. Um, so they're usually capped like maybe three or four million yeah. or they're renting forever. Um, yeah. But, you know, our, our market's really driven by the, the CEO or the entrepreneur that owns their own company or the head of a hospital system or, you know, the head of a university. Um, and those are the people that you actually can build a, a bona fide business with. The athletes are wonderful, but we know that they could be very fickle and they're um, little, they can be a little more challenging to work with. Um, so, but they're here, you know, they've, um, they, they're here. We've got yeah, well, some good sports, fortunately. I was going to ask how, uh, how it's different and what you need to do different when you work with a celebrity or someone like that. Uh, obviously you need a, they need to trust you a lot, um, but is there, what makes that different from working with someone else? I think in terms of the athletes, they're just younger and a lot of them, they haven't maybe been through the whole process. So you're not only educating them, but you're educating the mother and the business manager and the brother and the assistant and kind of going through a whole you know, process of all of their advisors. Um, and there's usually a pretty long, long list of them. Yeah. Um, so it's, and you know, if they're not from here, they only know, they, they may not know the area as well. Um, our, our area, probably like most, most of your markets, it's very location specific. So you can be in one town, but one street is gonna have a much different valuation than the street a block away. So it's just kind of, it's, it's, it's a very old area. So we have like these old, really established areas and then kind of, you know, some newer homes or some newer pockets that are those neighborhoods are now kind of converting. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's got a lot of challenges, definitely has a lot of challenges, but um, at the end of the day, it's all about guiding them in, in the right direction. And because, you know, athletes in particular, I'm always kind of conscientious about, you know, that in a year or two or three, they could be traded. Yeah. You're going to get the phone call hey, I need to list my house. What's it worth? And the worst part is telling somebody that they overpaid for a house that you sold them. So <laughs> yeah, the NFL um, stands for not for long. Not for yeah, long. exactly. And, if, and if they don't, they, they don't last long. The coaches are even less. Yeah. We've had a lot of coach turnover here. You just got Doc Rivers now this year. He's doing a good job. Yep. Yep. He bought a nice property in the city. Um, so some new, new Eagles coaches have, have come in. Um, so yeah. it's, you know, it, it's good, but again, those aren't the biggest driving factors of our market, yeah. unlike Florida or, or California. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Florida, let's go back over to Mary. Uh, Mary would love to ask you the same question. Uh, looking back to March of last year to now, uh, was there any big challenge, one big challenge or a bunch of challenges that you were able to overcome? Uh, and if you want to share with us any specific story uh, that turned into success uh, with persistence. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, of course. Well, I think that everybody had the most, I mean, the biggest challenge of all, which was to adapt and to, to become and overcome this situation. And I think that one of the things that we have to congratulate ourselves and congratulate everybody is how fast, how adaptable and how eager we were to, to do our job and to be able to fulfill and overcome this situation. And particularly for me, I think that Miami, as I said, is a very open market. And what I have to say is that it has been a really good success is to find rentals using cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So we were able to adapt uh, different for forms of payments and something that was very interesting about this market. And also, um, if you go to the Miami MLS, you're going to find that you can also put um, cash, conventional loans, everything, but you can also um, check the cryptocurrency as, uh, as an option to get your property. So we were able to, to find um, so many people with rentals and that wanted to have the opportunity not to only see it as only real estate, but also have the advantage and the profits of, of that market. Okay. So that was very Great. interesting what, what happened here. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. 
Now, uh, I know a big part of your business is the, is, is the Latin America uh, business that, that, that you work with, um, with your background. Is travel opening up again? I know that they have different rules, like my friend in Colombia can't, still can't travel. So I know everyone's a little bit different. Uh, how's that? Is that becoming better? What's the prognosis on the travel? Well, I think coming from one of the, let's say like the, the country that has more restrictions, which is Venezuela, uh, many people actually are coming and traveling more. Uh -huh. um, there are restrictions, like if you're coming, for example, from Europe, you have to spend a few days in another country before coming to the United States. Mm -hmm. And basically with um, Latin America, that doesn't happen. You only have your, you only have, need to have your test and prove that, but uh, flying is opening. And many people are coming from the vaccine and, you know, visiting their families again. And now that we have these situations, I, yeah, many people are coming. Now I know you do investments. Is there any uh, is there any new uh, development or project that you want to tell everyone about that you think would be a, real, a really big one? I know I know the Waldorf Astoria is coming uh, to downtown Miami, which we're all excited about. It'll be the, the tallest building from New York to uh, on South. Uh, so, is there any other building or development that you see coming in that maybe people don't know about that's going to be a big one? Yeah, I actually believe uh, we have a lot of, as, as you said, we have the Waldorf Astoria, we have mm -hmm. Missoni, we have Aston Martin. Aston uh, we Martin. have a lot of, yeah, luxury um, investments that you can have. But mm -hmm. I, I actually love to invest in projects that are more like Nativo, mm -hmm. which are uh, properties that are in the mid 350, 400,000. And no. then you have the liberty um, to do short rentals. You can do by day, you can do by no. monthly, you can also live there. And as yeah. I was telling you before, it's located in the downtown area. Um, you have the American Airlines um, Arena very close, Bayside, which is one of the biggest um, tourist points of Florida, actually. It's, it's hard to imagine, but sometimes when you think about it, it's second to, to Disney World. So you are like, okay, <laughs> we are in a situation that basically um, this area is becoming very interesting yeah. and they are remodeling, they're putting new restaurants, they're putting everything. So I basically like those type of projects because mm -hmm. you can um, invest mm -hmm. um, in, a, in, in, in more units and also you can get more, more cash flow and it's easy to, if you want to sell it and if you want to turn over, then you can do it easily. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that projects for luxury are more for the people that want to have a really nice vacation home here and they want to like have a home away from home yeah. and enjoy those amenities because um, the more luxury that you go, the more restrictions that you're going to have also in condos. Mm -hmm. like they're not going to allow you to rent your property unless, you know, it's, it's, it's a contract and they have a lot of restrictions. Those types of projects like Nativo, um, they're very good because they're going, they're going to even have their own management in place. So mm -hmm. for international investors and people that actually doesn't live here, um, it's really good because you're going to have the comfort that your property is going to be managed a, good, the, a, ver, a very good way. Yeah. And many of these projects are also having a lot of innovation in health. So mm -hmm. they're going to have like clinics, they're going to have you know, so many good things, um, um, community spaces, um, everything. So I think it's really good. I really like that project. <laughs> Sounds terrific. Sounds terrific. We're going to go around one last time to everyone uh, as we're, oh, we're almost out of time, but I'd love to get last thoughts from everyone. Uh, let's first go over to Susan in Los Angeles. Uh, Susan, we'd love to hear any last thoughts that you want to share with everyone out there. Uh, you, the floor is yours. We'd love to hear any thoughts that you would have and, and what you want to tell anyone out there. Well, uh, Los Angeles is alive and well. So if you're looking for a property and, you know, give me a call, I'd be delighted to be of service. And, uh, you know, we're here with open arms. So come on out. All right, perfect. And of course, uh, on our website, hoperesidence.com, you can find all of Susan's and everyone's information there. Uh, we, since we like the extra web, web traffic. They could always just look up Susan Stark as well, but we want them to come through our website. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Stark, SusanStark.com. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for uh, having me. It's been really awesome. Hey. And it's been it's a pleasure meeting all of you. Thank you. Don't leave us yet. We're, we're still okay. with other guys. Okay. I'm, all I'm right. watching you. You better not get off early. No, no, no. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Well, let's go over to uh, uh, Barbara in Austin, Texas. Uh, any last comments or thoughts that you want to uh, that you want to tell everyone out there? We'd love to hear it. Well, I guess if it's geared toward agents, it's just you know know how to represent your clients and 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 be really clear um, in setting their expectations because I think that's one of the things. Whether you're when you're on the listing side, you know um, it's very hard. You're getting so many offers on these properties and so many agents don't, especially those newer agents that we talked about earlier, really don't necessarily understand how to present the best offer. Um, on the listing side, of course, you know, I try to, and I, if I'm representing the buyer, I'll ask the listing agent for as much information, just trying to be able to craft the best offer that, that I can. Um, and I think really just trying to work together. Remember, we're in this together. It's a collaboration. Um, between agents. And so I, I would say that like, it, it's a tough time, but we still have to treat each other with respect. And I think that's a big deal. Um, and of course, you know, if anybody knows, you know, if anybody wants to come here, I'm open and happy to help and lo love to work with anybody and take love to take referrals from y'all too. Absolutely. And, uh, and I see you have the, the whole area covered the maps in the background there. You You've got a lot of maps out back there. You got all the zip codes. <laughs> I do. You're ready to go. Hundred mile uh, radius right. from Austin. Hundred mile radius. Well, Maybe. you know, you kind of it's it's interesting. Texas is big, like they say that, right? Everything's bigger in Texas. So I I do work a wide area. I'm actually part of three different MLS systems in order to oh, cover wow. the, the markets that I serve. So awesome. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and, and, uh, and thank you for having me. Have you on again? I'm going to connect all you guys too after we talk. I'll connect all you guys in the email. Uh, as well. That's um, great. Let's go over, let's go over to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, the home of Rocky Balboa. That's uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Andrea Daisy, uh, any last thoughts that you would have? Uh, we'd love to hear them. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be a part of the Hope Residence Network. This is um, new to me. I just joined. So really looking forward to all the, the opportunities to have with, you know, such great professionals as, as yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this whole trend is going to continue for a little while. So hopefully, you know, we can just keep doing, I'd love to do more networking deals outside of, outside of Philly. Um, it's easier once you hand somebody off to another agent. So I'll definitely keep all of you in mind and, and likewise, and hopefully we can all continue on the same success path as, as we've had and um, keep, um, keep the values high and, and closing deals. And you, with your background in New York, you probably have a New York connection too, right? With that, uh, you probably have a lot of back and forth from New York business. I do, yeah. I mean, I keep my license there actually with Douglas Elliman. Um, so that's, you know, that's been, been a nice feature. Elliman doesn't have an office here in, in Philadelphia. Um, and we don't yet have an office in, in New York. So it's been working well, but um, you know, it's, it's just, sometimes the, the best agents aren't the ones that are in your own company, right? It's just knowing that who you can, who you can transact with and get along with and who you're going to get to the closing table. So um, sounds like all of you kind of are, um, have around the, the same path and um, I hope we can do some deals together. All in great markets. Absolutely. Better weather than what I have here. So uh, uh -huh. that's been the trend. Well, no, this, but the nicest time of year is right now, I feel like in Philly in the mid, mid Atlantic, the springtime and the, is, fall. Yeah. Spring and fall. the fall. Spring yeah, and fall. Yeah. But, but people don't realize, like, I'm down here in Miami. When you go up to uh, the mid Atlantic, because I'm DC, which is obviously right near Philly, when, when you go up to mid Atlantic in the summertime, it's just as hot as Miami. I mean, it's like 95 and humid. You can't, it is. once it gets 95 and that 100% humidity, what else? I mean, it doesn't matter if it's 100, 110. It's all the same, right? That's right. <laughs> Your ocean's warmer. You can at least use the ocean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. True, true. Well, thank you so much. We're, and I'm looking forward to working with you as well. We're excited to have you on and uh, looking forward to everything. And uh, I owe you for the plug. Thank you for the plug. Let's go over, let's go over to uh, Mary for her last comments. Uh, Mary, uh, over here in Miami, of course, uh, the floor is yours. We'd love to hear any last thoughts that you have. Well, thank you so much. Well, first, I think I'm going to steal um, a very good phrase from our mayor, 
how can I help? <laughs> ¿Cómo les puedo ayudar? <laughs> and I think that now is a great opportunity and I'm very glad that I got this space to actually network and of course hear all the experiences and that we are not alone in this market that every state is experiencing and there is opportunity for everybody. You just have to keep an open mind, have vision and then find your right strategy because nothing works. Um, it's not the same for everybody. And basically many times we try to find or we try to get into that wheel and it's not the right opportunity for everybody. So I think that, yes, I would love to help and I would love to guide. And I would like to have the opportunity to keep on going with these conversations and of course, um, be able to help um, everybody that wants to come to our beautiful city and our estate. So yeah, we are here. <laughs> Awesome, very, very, very well said. Well, uh, Susan, uh, Andrea, Barbara, Mary, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, great, great panel today. We really enjoyed having you guys on. We'll have to have you guys on again very soon. Um, we've been on uh, Zoom, but we're also live on Facebook uh, as well. And we're gonna have a whole video download of a YouTube video and we'll send it to all you guys on an email and connect you guys. Uh, and we'll do a whole article on it online tomorrow. Um, and anyone who's out there who wants to, uh, is interested in any of these markets and wants to work with the best of the best, um, we're going to have the whole video downloaded to go to our, our website uh, at hoteresidence.com. I'm Eric Haas, the director, uh, and we really enjoyed having you everyone on today. And thanks again so much. You guys have been amazing. Be safe and uh, hope the market keeps on crushing out there and the inventory goes up for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so right. much. Thank you so thanks. much. Thanks, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Lovely to meet all of you. Yep. You take Thank care, you. everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>